Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. And I wanted to make a video today really based around cordage for the most part. But I also just kind of want to talk to you about a few things while we're making the video. This plant beside me here is hibiscus. And it makes one of the best cordages that I've found in eastern woodlands as far as tensile strength and easeability, if that's a word, of harvesting the material. We'll talk a little bit about harvesting cordage materials and things like that in a few minutes while we're making our cordage. But what I want to talk to you about with this plant is, I used this plant for a couple of years once I discovered the properties of the plant before I even knew what it was. I actually had to send pictures of it in bloom to my buddy Arthur Haynes to get a positive identification on it. And I don't know if that was my own lack of ability to research the plant properly or because there just isn't that many pictures of them around. But there's lots of this out here in this wetland area of the wildlife area. And so it's an easy plant to get to. One of the things about this plant and plants in general that you're making cordage out of, you know, everything is a seasonal thing. And for the most part in Eastern woodlands, most of the plant materials that make good cordage in the Eastern woodlands are best harvested after the first frost when they are partially redded or partially rotted by nature. And there are steps that you can take to make the cordage even better after that. We'll talk about that while we're making our cordage in a few minutes. All right, minutes. so again, this plant is already dead. So I'm going to find the biggest stalk I can, and I'm going to split it down and cut it so that it will strip off. And then I can pull it, and it'll strip long fibers off the plant, like this one here. I think you guys can see that pretty well from there. We'll get some of these fibers and I'll show you how well it works here in just a minute. There's some really, really long straight shoots right here. And these are the ones you get the really nice long pieces out of. I'll set this one on the tripod for a minute. Okay, so here's some quick and dirty material that we harvested. Now, here's the thing. There's a lot of things that people don't talk about, I think, when it comes to cordage and bushcraft. A lot of this stuff, especially this, it's got good tensile strength, right off the tree like this stuff does, or right off the plant like this stuff does. You can pretty much use this for like a withy, just twist it up, and you can use it to tie stuff off with as is, with almost absolutely no processing. You just twist it down, just like that, and you can tie that around something very easily, just like that, to tie something off. And it's got pretty good tensile strength just like it is. So there's really not a lot of processing involved to just make a quick lashing or binding out of this stuff. What happens when you make cordage is, the reason you increase the tensile strength of the material that you're using is because you spread the stress on the material out over lots and lots of fibers. Now the other thing with this cordage is, you've got usually some kind of a chafe or an outer bark, for lack of a better word, on the plant that you may want to get rid of. If you're just trying to make cordage quick and dirty, you don't have to worry about that. You could take this cordage and you could use it just like it is. Just get this twist started. It's really simple. Twist both bundles in the same direction. And then basically twist that direction and back the opposite direction, taking the bundles over the top of each other. So twist it this way and then twist the whole thing this way. So the technique is very simple. You're just twisting one side away from you and then both bundles toward you, the top away, both towards you, the top away, and both towards you, and that's gonna alternate them every time. And you're going to get some fairly decent cordage that way, very quick on the fly, that's gonna be really, really strong. So if you're in a hurry to get cordage made and you need it right now, this is an easy way to get that accomplished. And you can see Again, it doesn't take that long, but it is a process. And that's why I recommend carrying cordage in the five C's because making three or four inches of cordage only takes a few, you know, a minute. But to make 400 feet of cordage like you'd have on a roll of bank line could take a long period of time and harvest a lot of materials to do it. So it's easier to carry it. But this is an easy skill to learn. So I consider this a core skill for my students. Okay, so back to the whole thing of this being a core skill. I say it's a core skill because when you're talking about bushcrafting, you're talking about the crafting portion 
in the bush or in the woods. Whether you call it woodcraft, bushcraft, it doesn't really matter. But the point is that you are making usable objects off the landscape that you can use to make life more comfortable or affect your immediate survival. And cordage is one of those things that you need for almost everything that you do, for lashing, for binding, for tying, you know, if you'd lost everything, God forbid, or a bow drill fire. And this cordage is strong enough for a bow drill fire, no question about that. Now, if you wanna make some fine cordage and you're trying to really do this the right way and you've got time to mess around with it, what you really wanna do is you wanna soak this material in water. And you kinda of have to pay attention to how long you're soaking it because you're retting the material, you're helping the material to rot faster. You are, the water's going to separate the fibers from this chaff better. They're also going to release some of the collagens within the material and you'll feel it when you get it out of the water. If, it, if this chaff material kind of just peels off really easy with your thumb and doesn't stick to the material, then it's probably good enough. And you're also going to feel it slimy. If you get it out of the water and you start to work with it and it feels slimy, it leaves a slime on your hands, that's the collagens in the material and you've released those. It's time to start working that cordage. You don't need to let it go any further beyond that. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you real quick is about splicing, and it's really a simple process, but there's a right way to do it. I guess there's no wrong way to do it unless your cord breaks, but there are lots of ways to do it, but I want to show you the way that I teach because I think it's a, more, a stronger, higher tensile strength cordage in the end at the splice, okay? So let's take some of this cordage here and we'll just cut a piece of it off so that we've got a place we would have needed to splice. Let's say right there. So we get down to where we've got one short side. We'll get a little bit longer there. I want to give myself about an inch and a half or two inches there. And I've got one long side. And so now I'm going to try to take another piece that I split off like this one. I'm going to splice it in. So what I'm going to do when I do that, and again, if I had processed this cordage properly, this would be broken down into lots of fibers and not just one solid piece. But for on the fly, this is the way we're doing it. Now you can just overlap just like this and lap joint that cordage and then start twisting that as one bundle and just blend it in. And you'll have this tail sticking out the other end and you can cut that off later. But a stronger way to do that is to actually make a V in the material and put the short side to the long side and the long side to the short side. Tuck that up in there and twist that together as one fiber, just like this. You won't have anything sticking out on the end when you're done. And that V up there means that you've actually woven that splice into both sides of the cordage instead of just into one side. And just keep going until it disappears. Just get that thing going here real quick. Won't take but a second. Once you do this, doesn't take much time, it's just hard on the hands. And you can see our splice is right here. This cord is a little chubbier right there where the splice is. But we've got a nice strong splice in there. And I'm gonna go just a little bit further with this thing for a minute here just to show you, kind of, it's hard to give you a demonstration of the strength of the cordage without picking something up with it. We generally test it with like a five gallon jug of water at the school, but I'll give it a pretty good tug. And it's not coming apart and breaking. And that was right on the splice itself. So you can see that's in pretty strong cordage. Well, I probably rambled on a whole lot longer than I intended to, folks. And I apologize about that. I believe in getting to the point and getting it over with. But I appreciate your views. appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'm going to run back up to the trapper shed and get rid of my traps. And i got to get back to writing my fifth book, which releases late this summer, The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Bushcraft. Thanks, guys.